to Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina with a sellout crowd of nearly 22,000 for ACC Wednesday presented by Staples. And two of the nation's best tonight, number eight, Georgia Tech against number four, North Carolina. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick, Dick Vitale. It's great to have you with us. Ten days ago, we had a first in college basketball. Five teams from one conference, the ACC, in the top nine in the country. And a lot of people think that number four, North Carolina, is number one. I tell you, Mike, they certainly were sensational against Maryland. They are right now operating on all cylinders so effectively. Everybody's bought into the system. Win, win, win. They're all about run, baby, run. They've scored 100 points or more, three consecutive games. Last time that happened, they won the national championship at 93. But Paul Ewan and Georgia Tech are a legit contender. They have some outstanding players. You talk about their guards, their guards are sensational. And and this is a league that has one great point guard after another. Some would contend that Jared Jack is the best, and he's averaging 14.8 points a game. He leads this team in the absence of B.J. Elder. He's going to have to score as well as distribute the basketball with Elder out. You're right. And Raymond Felton is sensational. He's a great distributor. Only averaging 6.5 shots a game, but Paul Hewitt knows he has to control him. Paul Hewitt in his fifth season. He has won 87 games, and Roy Williams comes back to his alma mater. That streak of not winning 20 games in a year, that is going to end this season. The lineup for these clubs, Georgia Tech will be thin. B.J. Elder, the starting guard, is out, and also Rashawn Dickey, who was an outstanding freshman. He won't be able to play tonight. So Georgia Tech coming in less than loaded for bear. And this is a place you don't want to come into without your all your weapons. And they certainly don't have them tonight. I'll tell you, in the middle should be quite a matchup with Bay and Shencher. Hey, I look for having a big game. He had 28 and 27 in two of the matches against Georgia Tech. On the other side, Shencher was brilliant in the ACC tournament. You and I did the day. He had 17 points, 17 rebounds. Look at McCants. He's cheering. The fans are cheering. Who said this is a wine and cheese crowd? And Sean May is a totally different looking player. He has transformed his body, hasn't lost any weight, but he certainly added a lot of muscle and moved it around. Schencher against Williams in the center circle. We are underway. Felton with the opening tip quickly to McCanson and to May. Moving on Schencher. Short on the jumper, kept it alive, Georgia Tech ball. Had a great game against Kansas. They lost the heartbreaker, but he was sensational. What a nice pass. It was a great move to get by McCants, and that opened everything up. He's such a strong driver with the basketball, Mike. If he can get in a three-second area, I was talking to Roy Williams before the game, and he said we must keep him out of the three-second area. Muhammad will go to the free throw line, and this is still the place this young man does not want to be. 42.6% from the free throw line. He shoots so much better in practice, but Dick, when he gets in a game, he just can't make them. He's going to have to convert. They need all the help tonight without Elder. Gets one out of two, and they got a little full court pressure. Georgia Tech leads the ACC in defense. North Carolina leads the ACC and the country in scoring offense. Something's got to give. Something's got to give. <laughs> Felton, who was, has a much improved shot this year, can't hit this when the ball kicks out of bounds to the Jackets. The one common denominator that most clubs like to utilize when playing North Carolina, you try like heck to get them five on five because if they get in transition, they are so explosive. I mean, we sat here the other day, Brad Nessel and I, it was 32-32. We looked up at the board, it was 45-32. <laughs> That's right. Jack McHenry. McHenry's one of those kids, an intangible player. It does so many good things on the floor defensively. Muhammad against Manuel. What a great matchup of athletes and defensive players. Schencher. Well, that's a good indication of how much stronger Luke Schencher has become because May is strong as an ox when he held his own in there. 
Schencher's going to have to have his A game because they're going to really go inside and try to attack him with May. There's Muhammad now on the baseline. There's Jackie Manuel who brings that good size defensively. Schencher with the left hand comes up short. Tipped out of bounds to the heel. Georgia Tech had that incredible run last year. It really started back in New York when they beat Connecticut. Then they had that road win over Duke. You and I did the game where they played beautifully. They have lost two tough ones this year, Gonzaga and Kansas. May triple team. Williams somehow kept it alive, tossed it up, and it goes in. And that's why he's shooting better than 60%. Everything's going down. It's like the Atlantic Ocean for him. Boy, Muhammad undercut, and the foul will be on Jackie Manuel, his first. Trying to post inside. Watch him try to post it. Look at him sealing here. He's trying to post up really strong inside. He's got the great hands. Gives it to a fallen Jawad Williams for the conversion. What a year he's having his senior season, Jawad Williams. Schencher, good head fake, then dumps it down low. Contact, no call, but the ball goes out of bounds to North Carolina. It's a travel on Schencher. Current win streaks across America. Illinois won 16 in a row, going after 17. The Orange Crush fans are going bananas. Carolina with 13. Boston College with 13. Duke with 11. And Kansas with 11. I get a chance to see Duke and NC State tomorrow night. May and North Carolina gets its first Told you early. lead at 4-1. Told you earlier, Mike, I think he's going to have a big game here this afternoon. Bynum had that partially blocked from behind. Looked like this shot. McCann's got a piece. Here goes the running game. Run, baby, run. Carolina basketball is big. The Carolina Skies is opening up big time. It's Carolina Blue. And that's a great indication of why they lead the nation. Bynum for three. Schencher, offensive rebound. That was a clinic on how to run the transition game. Jack, nice move to get inside. Kicks it out to Bynum. He'll drive and sky for the layup. The senior from Chicago with his first buck. He's a big-time scorer. Look how quick the heels get back down the court. That was a great drive by Bynum attacking the goal. When they get B.J. Elder, I mean, that takes him up another notch. Muhammad will be called for the foul, a three-shot foul, as McCants got it off and draws the personal. Take a look at this transition game. Felton kicks it out. Mays anticipated already. Before that ball came to him, he was anticipating Manuel on the wing. Great team transition basketball. And that's where they have stepped up. They have really appreciated sharing the basketball. McCants, the junior from Asheville, a 75% free throw shooter this year, misses the first. 6-3 Carolina. You know, they're second in the nation in assists as a team. They are right now. Actually, North Carolina is number one with 22 assists per game. Illinois is second at 20 assists. That means you're sharing the basketball, and that's what basketball is. It's a team sport. Move the ball, have motion offensively, and a lot of good things are going to happen. McCants misses two out of three. It might have really troubled him a year ago. Not so much anymore. He doesn't seem to need to score now. He's matured a lot. And the ball inside to Schencher. Good move. Get him involved. Boy, good pass by Schencher on the baseline, but the shot won't go by Muhammad, who's tried to improve that mid-range game. McCants. Trying to get too fancy and threw it away. Muhammad back the other way. McCants makes it a double mistake and commits the foul. Muhammad going up for the jam. He didn't see his teammate, Jack, wide open in front of him. Could have dumped it up to him for a layup. Should have given it up. He's got to scream, got to communicate. Here it is. We're going to watch the trailer. Freeze it right here. Freeze it right here. You got to get the ball up to him. You got to get the ball up to him. There it is. You got to hand it off to him. But he's got to communicate, Mike. See, if I'm coming down with you now and you're on that break, I'm yelling, Mike, Mike, give me the rock, Mike. I'm, I'm not to... passing it to I you. No, you would never give it to me. <laughs> I want to be big man on campus. I'm not passing it to you. <laughs> you're going to try to jam like That's you right. Like I saw you jump. <laughs> so yeah, I know. So I'll be a foot short. <laughs> Seven to four heels with 16.45 to go first half. Schencher comes out with May to about 17 feet. 
Manuel inside to May, and he was bothered by Schencher. May offensive rebound, and Schencher, the Australian, clears that one. He had 17 points and 17 rebounds in the ACC tournament when they beat North Carolina. Schencher did. Felton with a steal, pushes it ahead to Manuel. He's pressured defensively and can't hit it. I'll tell you one thing, these kids from Ramblin' Wreck are a bunch of tough kids mentally. And what an outstanding leader they have in Paul Hewitt, one of the rising stars in coaching. Well, you can see how intense they are on defense. And here's Muhammad getting inside again and drawing another foul. He's got to convert, though, Mike, like you said earlier. He's going to get to that free throw line with his driving ability, but he's got to be able to convert. Foul is on May, his first, the fourth on the team. And Muhammad goes back to the free throw line where he has struggled his entire career. It's a two out of four tonight. And he gets to the rim so easily. So athletic, so explosive, great first step. The free throws, huge part of his game. ESPN's NBA coverage continues tonight at 9 Eastern. Yao Ming, Tracy McGrady, and the Rockets against division rivals Dallas Mavericks NBA Wednesday on ESPN. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Gotta protect your home turf when you start league play. Wisconsin, by the way, has got 37 in a row. Bull Ryan, one of the most underappreciated coaches in America, but they have Michigan State coming in, and that's going to be a tough task. The lead has been cut to two as we approach the 16-minute mark. Both teams continue to go with a starting five. Felton so unselfish, only averaging about 6.5 shots a game. Manuel on the give and go. That's a poor pass as Noel, seeing his first action, throws it away. But well, he telegraphed that pass. You can see it coming. I love the toughness of Will Bynum. He's a tough competitor. Played high school basketball at Crane High School with Tony Allen, now with the Celtics. Dick, I think fatigue's going to be a factor tonight because Georgia Tech is so thin right now. Bynum, that's a tough pass. Skips to Muhammad. He can't hit it. And the rebound goes to Marvin Williams. You're going to love this kid, number 24. He is a stud rebound. Manuel gets it low, will draw the foul. Marvin Williams is a star of tomorrow. There's no doubt about it. 15 14 to go, first half, back in a moment. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Staples. That was easy. And in part by Mitsubishi Motors. Wake up and drive. We're in Chapel Hill. It's a two-point game. Carolina, Georgia Tech. Let's check in with our colleague Doris Burke. Doris. Well, Mike, you touched earlier on how good Georgia Tech has been defensively this season. It's been a consistent theme dating back to last year's Final Four run. The offense has been a little bit of a different story. Paul Hewitt says an over-reliance on the dribble has been something that has hurt his team. Now, the telltale sign tonight will be Luke Schenter. Do the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets use Luke Schenter as a conduit to an effective passing game? If they run their offense through the post, Dick, they feel like offensively they can be effective, but they must pass it well tonight to have a chance. Darsh, you're 100% right. they got to go to the inside and utilize him with inside-outside action, getting the ball back out to guys like Bynum and certainly bringing it out to Jack. Neither team has been able to get it in the hole very frequently here in the first five minutes. When you look at North Carolina, they lead the ACC in scoring. In margin of victory, plus 25. Field goal percentage, 52.9. Three-point shooting, 44%. Free throw shooting. They're forcing 21 turnovers a day. What haven't they done? Right now, what they haven't done is get rid of Georgia Tech early. Turnover. Here comes Felton. I think it's the quickest guard in America from foul line to foul line with the rock in his hands. Roy Williams going to his bench. Scott comes in. Felton. More of a flicky shot this year than a push shot. Manuel, good offensive rebound. Noel. Back out to Felton for another three. He's really worked on his delivery, on his release. Instead of having the chicken wing, he has brought the arm in. He's got it vertical. He has it closer to him. 600 shots a day during the summer. Work ethic, work ethic, and that's how you improve. 10 to 5, and Jared Jack throws it away, trying to hit Bynum in the corner. 
that's a message for any kid out there, Mike. You want to get better at something, you got to work, work, and work. 600 shots a day with his dad, right on top of him, working on him, getting that arm in. See, he scored so easily in high school, he didn't have to worry about sure. missing a shot or two. And look at look this at his speed. quickness. I love him. Everybody loves Raymond. You can see why. May back in there. Schencher got a piece. Well, you have to be impressed by Schencher. His strength remarkably improved over a year ago. He showed a lot more toughness, too, inside because May is really challenging him. Jack against the triple team and turns it over. Scott a little bit out of control, and May knocks the ball out of bounds. Look at Schencher now, there's the block shot. Had five the other day against Virginia. They are fourth in the nation in block shots. They average seven block shots a game. Oh, and look the at Aussies fans love it. Yeah, they love them. Came out strong last year, goes to the final four. Paul Hewitt's brought about so much excitement. It's the hot ticket now, other than the Falcons and Mr. Fick. No, absolutely. <laughs> the Otis Tarver will come in and we may have a uh, blood issue. Parvis had some knee problems, had knee surgery. You, know, you need some quality time with Dickie out out of Tarver tonight. And this one they tried to feed into Marvin Williams, the big freshman out of uh, the state of Washington. He can't handle it. For the first seven minutes, what Georgia Tech has done exceptionally well, they have really negated the transition game. Put a little drought though offensively. They're going to quit turning the ball over, or they're going to get blown out of this building. That's a tough play inside. They can't get the shot, but will draw the foul from Spencer. And that's the first on the 7-1 senior. He utilizes his body so well. He used the basket as a shield with the reverse layup. Strong body. We've documented so many times the great upbringing. Dad was a superstar at Indiana. One of the great teams of all time, 76 with Benson and Buckner and Bay. His dad was player of the year. Great He's father the, and son relationship. He's the first sophomore to lead the ACC in rebounding since Tim Duncan did it 9.8 a year ago. 8.6 this year. Hits both free throws. First Carolina player to lead in rebounding since our own Brad Doherty was in the house right. here tonight. Here comes the double team, and it's off Georgia Tech out of bounds. Anthony Morrow, the last to touch it, and that is the sixth Georgia Tech turnover. Anthony Morrow's a kid that has a chance to be a star. He's got a great stroke. Paul Yud was telling me yesterday on the phone, he said, Dick, you have to see him in practice every day. He said he's tough, he can make shots, and he really has the respect of all the upperclassmen. He's getting more and more minutes now. Not just because of the injury situation, but because of how well he has played. Noel, no, check it, that's Williams. Boy, is he a powerhouse inside. Got the offensive rebound and slams it back. Big time offensive rebound. North Carolina, they're going to have a lot of fun in this house. Oh, and they're going to have fun in this house this year. This type of dandy is special. Watch the offensive rebound by Marvelous Marvin. There's Marvin with the catch. There's the up, up, and away in the jam. Mike, he is going to be a special North Carolina player. He's one of my stars for tomorrow. You watch the breakout year next year that he will have. He will break. Watch these guys next year. They're getting feeling good. They're way right now as freshmen. Rudy Gay, Connecticut. Aldridge is going to be sensational at Texas. Morris, Kentucky, and Robinson. In fact, Morris almost went to Georgia Tech. Came this close. Went to Kentucky because of Mr. Schencher and that he wanted to play right away. Georgia Tech hasn't had a field goal in nearly five minutes. And they are down by nine. They haven't had a shot in about four minutes. The They're not going to get one on this trip. I tell you, North Carolina has bought into the system on the defensive side. They are playing a lot better defense than they played when they were freshmen at South. So they can't Last trio. year, people shot 44.4% against North Carolina. That was the worst in Roy Williams' history as a coach. Of course, he inherited these guys. That tremendous talent, but they didn't play defense. He said they have to buy into it. 
It was unacceptable. You're not going to win big unless you lock it up on this side of the floor. But how could you look at what Roy Williams had done and say, I'm not buying into exactly. this? Exactly. Well, I think ultimately that's what won him over. The credibility that he brought to that sideline. The 28 wins. You know, he's the fourth and winning this coach percentage-wise. And the only three ahead of him ready for this. Claire B. Adolph Rupp and John Wooden. Not bad. Eight turnovers for Georgia Tech. They have only gotten off seven shots. No wonder they're down by nine points. Well, they're fortunate it's only nine yeah, because they are. they're playing on the defensive side. Could be 20. Oh! Porter by Felton out of the corner. He's hit two in a row. He's made at one time this year. We're ready for this Mike. You would have never believed it. He made 12 in a row at one time. 15 is the all-time record. He had 12 in a row from the three-point line. And came into this game shooting better than 54% from long range. Muhammad quiets the crowd with a lay-in. He has five. And look at the pressure Fell puts on the defense the way he runs the ball up the court. Jawad Williams off target. He has been off too much this year, shooting better than 60%. That one is off the knee of Sean May, out of bounds, a turnover for the heels. The lead is still 10-7, team seven. Number four over number eight. Seventeen seven North Carolina over Georgia Tech tonight. ESPN two on we'll the college basketball doubleheader for you. Eight Eastern, the still undefeated Kansas Jayhawks hope to stay that way even without Wayne Simeon as they take on the Iowa State Cyclones at home with their 25 and one in the last two years. After that, Nevada and conference foes University of Texas. El Paso. Let's check in with Doris Burke. Doris. Well, Dick, Mike touched earlier on a little bit of Sam Cassell's insult to the Carolina fans dating back to 1991. He called them a wine and cheese crowd. Those days are over, and you can pinpoint it to a game of January of 2000. It was a snowstorm. The game was against Maryland. They had a first-come, first-served basis situation in the house. It was exceptional. The students all came in early, got here first. The Rams Club, before the next season, put in this row of stanchions. $250,000 it cost, but it's been worth every cent, guys. The atmosphere, very different now. Well, you know, Gary Williams said Saturday, he told us, he said, hey, I was here when they started to change this environment. He said that day was when it happened. And now Roy Williams, he's been educating the fans, really going around, educating them, talking to them about the students down on the floor now, jumping. There's another school that does that, don't they? What do they do that? They jump up and down and stand on door. What's the name of that school, Mike? Come on. It starts with a D. Oh, really? You give me the D, the K, and the E, and I misspell it. <laughs> Can't believe you'd leave that for you. Williams, nice drive. I did a thing on my pre conference schedule in terms of the top players in the country, the top ten. Three is for McCants in there, I hope? Yes, three of the top ten for North Carolina. You really could put in four for Jawan Williams. He is having a phenomenal year. I really thought McCants was going to force that shot after he had done such a nice job of creating a turnover at the other end, but he didn't. He passed the ball. Nice job by Rashad McCants. He's, he's also playing on the defensive side as well. Take a look at him getting down in the defensive stance. He beats the man to the baseline, blocks the shot, I tell you, that game against Maryland, he took two shots in the first half, didn't force anything, and he became the leading scorer by the end of the game with his performance in the second half. That was my point from earlier, Dick. He doesn't seem to need to score now. And he gets free underneath, gets the feed, gets the lay-in. You and I talked about it so often last year, how he had the ability to go inside, post on guards. They can invert him. They do a great job of inverting their guards at Wisconsin. Bull the Ryan. Heels have their biggest lead, 21 to 8. They are really playing tough on the defensive side. Buying them for three. That's partially blocked, perhaps, by McCann. Well, I think he got a fingertip on him. Bynum wanted the foul. Didn't Shen get it. Schenter, 14 feet in and out. Offensive rebound. Follow Mario West, who's going to get some rare minutes. He's a good athlete, West. Look at a good look now. Great look at pass to May. What great vision. What great vision. He says, Mr. May, I'm going to get you to rock. I saw them today about 3.30 this afternoon. They were together. I said, Mr. May, never let him out of your sight because he will get you the ball. West, nice feed to center. Fouled from behind by McCants. The crowd didn't like it. 
but McCann's got a big chunk of the seven footer. I told you earlier before the game that I thought May would have a big time game. He's got the great body, he gets positioned really well. There's McCants with the little layup inside. Now watch Felton, the dump down inside. They don't find their man. Schencher doesn't find May, and May gets the easy layup. Schencher out of Hope Forest, South Australia, 7 1, 250 done a great job of really making himself into a better player. I mean, North Carolina has been so impressive early this season. They have really just put the hurt on people. I asked Roy Williams tonight in his office. I said, Roy, how do you compare this team with some of your great teams that you had in Kansas when you had Pierce, LaFrance, and Vaughn? He said, if they buy in the plan on a defensive end, they can be as good. Well, certainly there is a world of depth and talent here. And he knew he had a world of talent a year ago, but they were not willing to do the things he wanted them to do. Are you shocked? I'm not shocked. Roy Williams just brings winning with no, him. No, obviously that's uh, what he did at Kansas. That's why they wanted to come back here so much. Jawad Williams got another piece. This one's knocked out of bounds. And the ball is out to the Tar Heels. Georgia Tech, the eighth-ranked team in the country, is getting its lumps right now. They're down 23-10 with 9.02 to go first half. And for the Jackets, it has been a turnover festival. They have made one mistake after another, eight in the first 11 minutes. North Carolina is too good to do that. 14 to 4 in a pay, but let us not forget B.J. Elder out, Dickie out. That's a major loss for Georgia Tech. This ball's knocked out of bounds by Jawad Williams. There's the young man who has a sore knee. Should be all right soon and be able to come back. They just didn't want to take any chances with him. B.J. Elder, who is their scoring leader, or was. Dickie had 11 points in 14 minutes in their last ACC game. Sitting at 2-0 in the ACC. Went over a good Miami team. Watch Miami. They got great guard play with Height, Harris, and Diaz. They're going to shock some people, Frank Hates Club. He's doing a heck of a job down there. Little two man game. They got it to Muhammad. Great fake. Nice ball fake by Muhammad. Two young kids out there. Learn to utilize that ball fake and shoulder fake. Turnover by Felton. Jack takes it away. They've shut down Jack so far tonight. Hits a runner, four straight points for Georgia Tech. And Doris has more on B.J. Elder and when he might come back. Doris? Well, Paul Hewitt being cautious. His return date set for January 22nd again against Virginia Tech. He might be ready earlier, but Paul being cautious because a hamstring very easy to re-aggravate, guys. Williams misses the three, had two kicks off the back of the rim. Jack. Good penetration to Schencher. Three straight buckets for Georgia Tech. They've cut the lead back to seven. And it's created by Jack and his penetration ability. He's such a terrific guard. Williams powers it up against Schencher. The freshman has four. He's averaging 10 points a game, and he plays 20.8 minutes a night. Just think when he starts to go to 30 and 35 minutes as a south. Find him to Jack for three. Lost it and Felton comes out with the ball. Two on one. Find him got a piece. Felton with a rebound and that ball is swatted away by Anthony Morrow. There's some serious oh. hops there. Anthony Morrow is going to be a special player for Georgia Tech. Everywhere you look in this league, one great athlete, one great team after another. Georgia Tech still down by nine, but they've gotten back into the game with 7.21 to go. And the ACC this year, a meat grinder. North Carolina racked up Maryland the other night. Now they have to face number eight, Georgia Tech. And then Saturday, number three, <laughs> Wake Forest. I mean, there's no rest, man. It is one toughie after another. You get to do that game on Saturday on ABC. That'll yeah. be a beauty. Oh, I can't wait. You know, Chris Paul going at 130 against Raymond Felton. Skip Ross has done an amazing job. The Demon Deacon fans are terrific. They're one of my teams for the Final Four if I had to pick right now. 
But I'm going to tell you, you have a game tomorrow night. North Carolina State at home against Duke. I know it's too early in the season to talk about must games, but that's a must win oh, for I... North Carolina State. They lost three in a row. If they want to entertain any thought about finishing in the first division, about getting the NCAA bid, I think that's a must win. You know, it is certainly a must play better situation for them because it's very disappointing the start that they have gotten off to. This is a one and one for Bynum. Hits the shot, he'll get another. You know, Mike, they, when you look at Duke, for example, you talk about a situation where a coach is milking and getting maximum out of his people. You know, Mike Krzyzewski, but a, you know, a lot of people won't say that because he gets so much recognition. He's a Hall of Famer, but he is getting the most out of his guard play and out of Sheldon Williams. They are very thin. McCants and the freshman point guard is in there, Quentin Thomas. Everywhere you look, North Carolina has somebody to bring off the bench. I'll be watching you tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Mr. Patrick, great having you back. My pleasure, Dick. It's a thrill to be here, believe me. Noel double team kicks it out to Thomas, who is very, very quick. Out of the corner, Noel. You got guys like Noel stepping up in the game against Maryland. You know, it was 32-32 at one time, but two big shots by a guy you wouldn't expect. The guy by the name of Terry coming off the bench, made two big shots and scored 11 points. Here's Noel with a big three. We haven't even seen Ray Sean Terry, and as Dick said, he's been a contributor. Frederick, the freshman from South Carolina, who broke all of Felton's scoring records there in that state. Thomas. Thomas. Nice. Hello, Noel. Hello, Mr. Noel, Mr. Thomas. Not bad with the big guys off the bench, and they contribute. And before, they couldn't rest Felton. There was nobody to come in to play the point. Bynum trying to make something happen. He has seven points, and it's 30 to 20. I love the toughness of Bynum. He'll, he will not back down from anyone. Oh, are you kidding? Brains it. Are you serious? I mean, he's 6'9", stepping out. That is a big time, Mr. Potential. You know, Dick, for all the athleticism and the uh, press that the rest of the Tar Heels get, people will tell you this is Jawad Williams' team. He has played great, no question. He has been sensational. Manual drove. Williams gets the loose ball to Noel. Thomas kicks it out to Manuel, doesn't shoot that much. Look at oh, that's how good Williams is as a rebounder. He's just a monster. Marvin Williams, just 6'9", just a freshman. He is a tremendous offensive oh, rebounder. Great offensive rebounder who can step out. He can make the open shot from the perimeter. Wide open jumper, penetration. Noel knocks it down. And then we're going to see the penetration. Look at Mr. Williams. Hello, Jam City from out of Washington, the Seattle area. What great high school players out there. In fact, you take a look at right now, Washington has signed two great ones in Martel Webster. The kid named Brockman, who was really, Duke was in a hunt for him. Thomas did an excellent job off the bat. Some high fives. See, they're really bought into the love situation. And that's what winning can do, man. Look at Roy Williams. He just rolls on. He's got some great recruits coming in next year. Doris, this Carolina bench, uh, this really makes a difference in this club. Well, four guys in particular, David Noel, Marvin Williams, Melvin Scott, and Quentin Thomas, they call themselves the four horsemen, and they've certainly brought their share of pestilence tonight, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Hey, Doris, I'll tell you, she works. She works. There's no room for those horses in here tonight. Look at they playing defense, coming up and challenging Shensher. Having the lead has grown to 15 points. Having a tough time getting Jackson good looks. They really missed B.J. Elder. He was sensational last year in the game against North Carolina at Georgia Tech. He had 31. Paul Sean Ewing. May will be called for that foul, Dick, holding Schencher. That will be his second. Yeah, you can tell, you know, when B.J. Elder is here, I mean, you just lose so much. He had five threes in a row against North Carolina last year at Georgia Tech. Paul Ewing to me, along with Bill Self, two of the real rising stars in our coaching fraternity. 
guys that are, you know, just you look at them in about another 10 years, the numbers they're going to achieve. Schencher with a nice soft touch to free throw line, 35-21. The lead is 14. Really, I think Georgia Tech should be feeling fortunate that it's only 14. Well, you got four minutes on the clock. You try to get the single figures. People want to wonder about rising stars. What I'm talking about is, obviously, we got the upper echelon. The Mike Krzyzewski, the Roy Williams, the Lute Olsen, the John Chaney, the Bobby Knight, Eddie Sutton. And then there's that other group. And when they get years, they're going to be up there eventually replacing those that move on. McCants trying to get inside. And he is fouled by Mariel West. Felton inbounds and McCants with the easy two. What I like about McCants, he's bouncing on his feet. He's playing in a happy mood. He's not moaning and groaning because he's not taking a lot of shots. Blocked the shot right there. Tremendous defense by the heel. You've got to give the kid his due. He was so maligned because he's booty, and he earned a lot of that as well. Yes, he did. He earned it, but he also now earns the quarters. Well, then he makes the, the uh, comment, you know, that being in college at Chapel Hill is like being in prison, and that doesn't really endear him no, to anybody. I, I, I'll tell you one thing. I think what he meant there is there's a lot of rules. Nice pass. Absolutely. By. That's what he meant, but it's the term he yeah. uses. And of course, people are going to jump on that. Communication a lot of times. Some kids just have a difficult time communicating their concepts and thoughts. The Tar Heels of North Carolina rolling with a 16-point lead at home. Dave Reps and Jay Billis with you in the studio. Coming up at halftime, who is the real number one? Jay will break down North Carolina and Illinois. A little comparison. What do you think of the first half so far? Well, North Carolina is just so powerful offensively. They're playing terrific defense as well. But they're arguably better at every single position. I think with Georgia Tech, they play so hard and they create so many matchup problems. That's the way they're going to stay in it. That's been reflected in the score so far. Mike, back to you guys. All right, thanks very much. The lead is 16. The heels very, very impressive here at home. Their last time out, they just roasted Maryland on this court. Well, you know, Jay's right about the problems they create when you look at Georgia Tech and how hard they play. But you look at the skilled players of North Carolina. I mean, it's amazing. If you wanted to think about picking all ACC right now, I mean, how do you leave any of those guys off when you talk about Felton McKenzie and you talk about certainly May? And what about Williams? Jared Jack. Hits a couple of free throws, 37 to 23, three and a half minutes to go. First and the best, best freshman in the conference, obviously, as you look right here, offensive rebounds, leading the points. 15 offensive rebounds, leading the 20 points. Williams draws a double team and draws a foul. I don't think there's any doubt that he'll be the diaper dandy of the year in this conference. This kid is so special. ESPN Original Entertainment presents a new series, Tilt. You're playing poker, they're playing you. Tilt, presented by Toyota, premieres tomorrow at 9 Eastern on ESPN and is available on ESPN HD. The last foul on Anthony McHenry, the first on the senior. And Marvin Williams, the freshman from Bremerton, Washington, goes to the free throw line. Hey, congratulations, Eddie Sutton. He ties his mentor, Hank Iba, 767 W's. What a career, Eddie Sutton. I can't wait for Monday night. We have Texas and Oklahoma State. Dan Schumann and I up in Austin. That'll be one heck of a matchup. 38-23. Doesn't stop for you, does it? No, it doesn't really. You know, Saturday, talk about the matchup with Wake Forest. Love Wake. Caught them in about 10 minutes last night. They were sensational against Maryland. Jack can't penetrate. Goes out to McHenry. They're doing a great job keeping Jack away from driving into that three-second area. Scott Williams pass to Jawad Williams. It's Jawad Williams, Marvin Williams, Roy Williams, <laughs> Williams, Williams, Williams. It doesn't matter. They all perform. Jack left wide open for three. Can't hit it. Felton and Felton hurt. ran into a screen, and he's hurt. That's what happened to Gilchrist. He ran into a charge, which Scott Mann got hurt in that game with... Good save hits. by Williams off of McHenry, and Felton really doubled over, and that is going to get Quentin Thomas off the bench. Look at 
Shawan with the jam from out of Ohio. No envy. You know what's great about it? You walk around their players. There's no one envious of anyone. And I don't think that existed in the past. No, you couldn't say that last year, could you? I think guys were more interested in the stat line than they are about this year winning. Scott is a very good shooter. He has struggled with his shot this year coming off the bench, and that's an example. He's eighth man now from being a starter the last year in a 19-11 team. But he's in the top 10 all time at North Carolina shooting three-point shots, and Raymond gets a break. Now, this could have been a disaster a year ago. Raymond Felton on the bench, possibly injured. you got to give him a couple of minutes. Scott would have to come in and play the point. He is not a point guard. They have struggled with that for with two years. Now they've got somebody. You know, I love you dearly, but it'll be a disaster this year, too, if he's not well. <laughs> yeah, and that's lost the, it. <laughs> they lost the opening game Santa of the Club. year because he played in a summer league that right, for 40 right, years right. had been sanctioned. He thought they were still sanctioned. They, they weren't, so he was suspended for one game. And they lost it happened them. to be the first game, and they lose at Santa Clara. Otherwise, they'd probably be undefeated, although some people will tell you, hey, maybe it was a good thing because Roy Williams really clamped down on the map for that. I talked to him the next day. He just got off the plane in Hawaii, Roy Williams. We spoke on the phone, and he told me then. I said, are you going to be better than last year? He said, without a doubt, and that was enough for me. Williams turn around jumper in and out. Jackie Manuel gets the rebound, one against three, and draws a foul. They are really working on the offensive boys. They are dominating on the offensive glass. We're going to take a look at Raymond Felton right now. He's going to come out. There's the contact right there. He bumps into a big guy. Yes, sir. He'll be back. He's back over here. He is back <laughs> floor. Boy, right again. Manuel goes to the line. Now, Jackie Manuel is so interesting. He is listed as the shooting guard for North Carolina. Rarely shoots, averages 5.9 points a game. They are so good for one reason, because he is such a terrific defender. Look at Marvin Williams playing defense. There's the deflection, created the steal. Manuel, McHenry waiting for him, blocked the shot. Manuel got it back. Scott wide open. In and out on the three bodies fly. They are so hungry on the glass. Muhammad, bad pass. Here comes Center Scott is. back the other oh, way. What a great play. Oh, give and go, Muhammad goaltending. What a terrific play. Give and go, baby. Give the rock up, cut without it, get it back. Just give and go. Watch them give and go when they get a transition. Here they come. He's going to give it up right here. He's going to get it right back here, baby. Right back. Yes, sir. And there's the goaltending. 42-25. 102 to go first half. And this is against an outstanding team, just like with Maryland, who's in a little bit of a slide right now. But Gary Williams will get that back. And just get that one big win that will get him going. This is not the Little Sisters of the Poor. It's not Cupcake City, Mr. Patrick. This is not Cupcake City. Look at those eyes. Look at those eyes. He's looking all the time. Felton, last touch by Schenter, out of bounds to the heels with 40.8 seconds left. Doing such a great job on Jared Schott. I really thought he would think a little more offense, but they're doing a great job giving help everywhere he goes, making him take tough shots. Tough to play him one-on-one. -on -one. you got to get help against him. George Tech will have a chance to take the last shot of the half. Bynum is going to push it instead. Double team blocked and foul. And North walk. Carolina did not like that call at all. They wanted to walk call there. As you look at Roy Williams on that sideline. Bynum almost went to Oklahoma State. They didn't have any scholarship in. Transferred from out of Arizona. Take a look right here. Oh, get away with that in the NBA. Taking that extra step. Got There's away the, with it here. Yeah, he did. Jawad Williams called for the foul, his second. He's had so many big moments at Georgia Tech. Well, I'll tell you what, Bynum in the NCAA last year, he hit the winning shot in three of five games. And if you had not seen him play before, you found out just how tough his mind was and his willpower was. He's such a tenacious kid, very tough, fierce competitor. 
I'm telling you now, Georgia Tech, when they get a healthy cast, that's a different basketball team. You take an important part like a B.J. Elder out, you really take away and break down that whole offensive scheme. That's going to be a foul on Anthony McHenry, his second. And Georgia Tech, 14 points in the first half of the 26 have come on free throws. They only have six field goals in the half. Count them, six. You know, Mike, they played somewhat without him as well last year in that run to the Final Four when he had his problems with his ankle. But it's tough. You come in a road in North Carolina here without your full sure. complement of players. This is a different North Carolina team. If I had a look at my Final Four projections right now, and we're talking midseason, obviously. A couple writers were asking me before the game. I would say right now, you got to certainly throw Illinois. I love that Illinois team. That backcourt, it's hard for me to believe I did not see her do the game. Jay Billis did the game when they dominated Wake Forest. But to dominate Wake Forest, you got to be special. And you got to put in Wake Forest. I put in North Carolina and Kansas with Simeon. Jared Jack, great speed, gets the lay-in. 43-28. Explosive drive by Jared Jack, one of the premier point guards in America. In a year when there are so many outstanding point guards, John Lucas of Here Oklahoma comes State. Felton. Kicks it outside. Three, Scott knocks it down at the buzzer. North Carolina, the simple... All I can say is awesome, baby, and I can't wait when they hook up with Wake Forest at Wake Forest. That place will be rough and roll with Mike. 46-28, tremendous offensive and defensive performance in the first half by North Carolina. Great follow-through. It's the trifecta. Nothing but nylon. Nothing but nylon. NBA. Look at those offensive rebounds. Let's go to Doris Burke. Doris. Coach, as well as you've played all season, you've consistently asked for better defense. What's your reaction to that effort in the first 20 minutes? Well, we've still got to stop Jarrett Jack from getting into the middle. And uh, if we stay on the ground, make those smaller guys shoot over some of our bigger guys instead of fouling them all the time, I think that would help us too, Doris. All right, Coach. Thanks, guys. Always for a coach, something you can improve on. Absolutely. North Carolina's bench outscores Georgia Tech 21-0. Our halftime score 46-28. Let's join Dave Rebson and Jay Billis for the UPS Halftime Report. Thank you, Mike. A very impressive performance from North Carolina in the first half. Jay Billis will join me momentarily. We've gotten a good look at those Tar Heels. How do they stack up with the nation's number one team? Jay will break that down as we compare North Carolina and Illinois next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Electra, starring Jennifer Garner, Friday only in theaters, and TD Waterhouse, the alternative to higher priced brokers. Welcome to the UPS Halftime Report. ACC Wednesday, Georgia Tech came in giving up 58 points per game. They've given up 46 to North Carolina, still 20 minutes to go. Welcome in. It is the UPS Halftime Report. Dave Revson alongside Jay Billis. And we were saying we're going to preview and look at who is the number one team, break down these two teams. And yeah, we were mentioning, hey, the signature win for North Carolina was Maryland. This may turn into another signature win, Jay, but certainly the two most impressive performances so far this year that really jump out at you from the top teams were Illinois against Wake Forest and then also the, the win by North Carolina over Maryland. Which of these teams do you think is better? Yeah, I, I think North Carolina is better, but but don't don't take that the wrong way. I'm not being disrespectful to Illinois because I love the way the Illini play. They're the most unselfish team I've seen all season long. I just think in a seven-game series that North Carolina would win. Illinois is perfectly capable of beating the Tar Heels. They score 82 points per game. They have multiple entries into a motion offensive system. They keep great spacing while North Carolina does it a different way. Through their break and their secondary break, they run a lot of sets before they freelance. Over the last seven games, North Carolina averaging over 100 points per game, shooting 58% from the field. A frightening offensive display from North Carolina. Now, North Carolina has some better players at certain positions. Illinois may be better at point guard with Darren Williams, one of the best and finest point guards in the country. In the first half, that's where these teams have run away from their opponents. Illinois averaging over 15 points. 
better than their opposition. They're very good on defense in the first half. And North Carolina over 50 points per game in first half. They just hung 46 on Georgia Tech, the best defensive team in the ACC. How about the way they pass it? I think that's what sets these two teams apart. For North Carolina, because of the way they get the ball up and down the floor and the weapons they have at just about every position, almost 70% of the Tar Heel baskets are assisted. For Illinois, a little bit different. They share the ball in their motion offense. One of the best passing teams I've seen. And the quality of the pass determines the quality of the shot. 66% of the Illini's field goals are assisted. It is an amazing stat to have that kind of sharing of the basketball. And the, the coaches have done a tremendous job in their second years at their respective schools. Roy Williams, having taken over for Matt Doherty, the cupboard was certainly full. And he has gotten this team to buy into his system by running the floor and they are getting out and defending as a team. The biggest Achilles heel they had last year. And Bruce Weber has done a magnificent job. He has really gotten this Illini team on the same page. And they had a system change. They went from a high-low system where they controlled the ball to more of a motion-based system. And in motion, there is much more responsibility. You're not told where to go. You have to make reads. And he has some smart players. And arguably the best guard trio in America. Luther Head has had a spectacular year, one of the most improved and underrated players in America. And Dee Brown is shooting the ball as well as any guard in America, 56% from the field. And that includes almost 60% of the shots coming from three. Illinois hosts Penn State tonight in a game that could get very, very ugly. But both those teams I'm shooting Illinois better. in that Yeah, one. you think so? You're really going out <laughs> on a limb. Now, Kansas is at Iowa State. And that's a game where Iowa State is a tough place to play. Ooh. Kansas has not had a whole lot of luck there recently. And now they get their injured guys back on tonight. Wayne Simeon is going to be playing for Kansas. He's shooting up for the Jayhawks tonight. Also, Moody and Langford will be in there for the Jayhawks. Where do they stack up? And they're the number two team in the country. Well, I, I think they stack up very favorably to these other teams. We're talking about Illinois and North Carolina. But I think they're a notch lower. The, the difference is Kansas has a lot of room to improve because they're very young. And I think Wayne Simeon, having been out, gave opportunities to guys like C.J. Giles to play Darnell Jackson. They've got more minutes, and as a result, they're going to be a better team that now that Simeon's come back. And they're obviously not the only team that's been affected by injuries. Georgia Tech fans know a lot about that. We look at some of the significant injuries early on in the college basketball season. B.J. Elder obviously right at the top there. Winston Frazier, Mississippi State going to play its first game without him tonight. Which of these really jumps out at you? Well, I think the, the number of Michigan Wolverines on that list really jumps out. Tommy Amaker's really done a magnificent job with that basketball team to have them with 10 wins, a chance to get 11 tonight. But losing Lester Abram, their left-handed leading scorer for the season, really a tough blow. But you know, guys like Daniel Horton really have to step up, even though he's been injured, and really do more. And that's really difficult to do. Michigan on top of Northwestern by six at the half. We should tell you our game here is not quite as close as North Carolina has been very impressive, up 18 at the break on Georgia Tech. More coming up on the UPS Halftime Report. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Welcome back to the UPS Halftime Report. Hey, friends, and Jay Billis with you. Jerry Stackhouse coming up next is Dallas Mavericks taking their 22 and 10 record into a game against Houston. That is as soon as this game is over here on ESPN and a little reminiscence for the North Carolina fans who remember Stackhouse quite well. Boy, Jerry Stackhouse, one of the most athletic college basketball players I ever remember seeing. The guy could absolutely levitate. He and Rasheed Wallace led the Tar Heels to the Final Four. Look at that list. Antoine Jameson, one of the quickest from the catch to the release that I have ever seen. Vince Carter, an absolute skywalker. You're looking at 80 points per game in the NBA right now with that group. And Rasheed Wallace could score more if he weren't playing on such an unselfish team. Uh, Georgia Tech also some talented guys led by Stephon Marbury. Stephon Marbury and Kenny Anderson, two of the best point guards ever in the ACC. Both could score, rebound, and assist. And Matt Harpering has really made a nice career for himself. About 60 points per game right there from that group. So Carolina, even a 20-point advantage in this game. And don't forget, John Berry, not on the list, but will be in that game playing now for the Rockets. So you got one, each, well, each team has one guy representing. And uh, Jawad Williams representing as the kids say up by six <laughs> six points i should say unc by 18 second half coming up this halftime report is delivered by ups what can brown do for you 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Infinity, makers of innovative high-performance premium vehicles, and Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. Carolina with a halftime lead, 46-28. What makes it even more impressive? They are playing the eighth-ranked team in the country, Georgia Tech, and still lead by 18 points. My question to you, <laughs> Mr. Vital, is very simple. What makes North Carolina so good? At the beginning of this game, you said you thought they could be the best team in the country. They share the ball so well. They really are unselfish. To show that point, they had 16 assists in the first half. 16 assists out of 17 baskets. And you look at the rebounding totals on the offensive boards, which shows you're playing aggressively. Yes. 17 offensive rebounds. I mean, that was just I'd incredible. Like and they only shot 37%, but also Georgia Tech only shot 27%. And 37%, they shot 20 more shots than Georgia Tech. It's amazing. You're up 18, you shoot 37%. That's because you have now bought into the philosophy of playing defense and share the ball. 16 assists. And you have done it against the best percentage defense in the ACC, which Georgia Tech had coming in. Jack pushes it ahead to Bynum. Georgia Tech really needs an explosion here to start the second half. And if it's going to happen, Bynum is going to have to make it happen along with oh, Jack. Oh, nice feed from Schenzer, a little give and go. Bynum's got to really score in a bundle, and so does Jack. And it went inside and got the score off the nice pass by Schenzer. 46 to 30. Of course, we talked about the adjustments Georgia Tech would have to make. With more on that, here's Doris. Guys, and what was a nightmare of a stat sheet if you're Georgia Tech, Paul Hewitt said the main topic was offensive rebounds. They gave up 17. They know they can't win doing that, guys. And they only get four themselves. It's better than a 4 1 ratio. We thought dummy like me could figure that out. See, they're trying to go inside and in out. 4.25, but who's counting? <laughs> Shent your nice feed to Muhammad. But it took you a little time to figure that out. You were waiting there. I, I noticed your Well, it working. takes me a little time to get something in, Dick. 18:47 <laughs> to go in the ball game, and Georgia Tech has cut the lead to 18. Muhammad will go to the line. Nice pass inside to get the ball to Muhammad. Mike, I know you're a football lover, and we were talking about football earlier today. I'm telling you, Mr. Patrick, take uh -oh. this to the bank. The Jets time. are going to beat the Steelers. The Jets, really? The Jets are going to beat okay. the Steelers. Well, I, wouldn't, a couple. I wouldn't be surprised by anything. You did a great job this year, Mike. Thank you, sir. It was fun, as always. Williams, nice skip pass to McCants. Got it. Can he shoot the three? Can he shoot the three? And he's bouncing with joy as he goes back defensively. McCants has eight. The lead has grown to 19. Boy, tough move by Jack, but Felton, tremendous defense. Somehow, they maintain possession. Dump it inside the bay. Get May a touch. Triple team shoots anyway and makes it. Why doesn't he listen to me? I tell him, get it to me. The lead oh. is 21. Now they cut it back to 19, and that's the high flyer. Ismail Muhammad. One of the best. I mean, one of the best athletes in the country. Take a look at his zigzag pass coming from out of the corner. We're going to see the zigzag right here. Squares his body. Gets the great look. Set the body squared. Square the body to the goal. Shooting under control. That's what makes him so special. He's an inside, outside player, transition player. I think he's the most skilled and most explosive offensive player in the country. Talking about the cans. May bounces this off his foot, lost the ball. Here comes Bynum. Georgia Tech would love to run and cut into this lead, and Muhammad is fouled. Muhammad. Boy, this North Carolina crowd doesn't want anything going against him tonight. Marvin Williams will be called for his second personal foul. North Carolina has certainly dominated on this floor. 
Now the big question is, can they take that kind of performance and bring it away from home? And what a test it will be Saturday, because trust me, that's not Cupcake City going to play the Demon Dinkins. Gentry, nice move the left hand and got the Swedish touch. 53-36. Got to get him involved a little bit more offensively. North Carolina playing with such tremendous confidence, and you can see why. May backing in. Good pass. Manuel can't hit the lay-in, but it's out of bounds to the heel. There's a look at Jawad Williams. Felton comes over and says, don't worry about a thing, young fella. Don't worry. That's maturity. Here's the veteran, the point guard, the catalyst. Got to love playing with a kid like Marvin, though. Magnificent Marvin. 53-36. The heels just picking Georgia Tech apart tonight as they come in without B.J. Elder and without... Rashawn Dickey, their outstanding freshman rebounder off the bench. Felton for three. What a terrific job executing in a half-court game. So efficient, so unselfish. The catch with the assist brings one over to Felton, who normally is the one giving a rock off. What a terrific job of patience. They had such patience on the offensive side, and for it, they show that they're efficient. That's reminiscent of Roy Williams' mentor as Raymond Felton goes over there. Roy Williams says, Coach, did we do it the way you wanted? Did we execute that half-court game? And Roy says, yes. Yeah. Yes, Raymond, we did. Dick, North Carolina tonight with 19 assists as a team. Georgia Tech only has five. And that's not because Georgia Tech is a selfish basketball team. That's because of North Carolina's defense. You know, 19 assists, to put it in perspective, they lead the nation with 22 assists a game. We got 16 minutes left mm. in the game, and they already got 19 in the bank. Jack hits another free throw, 56 to 38, and Georgia Tech getting some pressure from Bynum. Starts and all Muhammad. Mr. Felton, who's second in the nation in assists, had another one right there, but Williams shot the ball. Williams was stripped on the way up. Here comes Jared. Jared Jack into a double team, nearly taken away from him. Try Georgia Tech maintain. Try to keep the ball away from Jack. They don't want him to get touches. They're going to foul before the war. Mr. Canado with the call. And Noel unhappy about the call. He picks up his first person. Well, we've never seen a player happy with a call. Never. No, but I have never seen a crowd this upset about a series of calls with an 18-point lead. I mean, they don't want to just win this game. They want to win by 50. Look at him shake and bake. Good ball movement. Noel. He gets one back. Boy, he sure did. He gets one back. Looked like a charge. Paul Hewitt thought so. He's not going to get that call. Back in a moment.